One thing the few mini PC reviews will talk about is irritating freaking fan noise. It's a problem. And I know it's not just me saying it, because plenty of you have mentioned the same thing in the comments over the years. So it's always been something I've covered and pointed out. A small, loud, whiny fans drive me completely bananas. In contrast, my desktop editing rig has five, yes five, 140mm fans, and is quiet even under load, thanks to the large blades that rotate slowly, like Homer Simpson in the oven. I'm pretty sure that's Homer Simpson in the oven, rotating slowly. His body temperature has risen to over 400 degrees. He's literally stewing in his own juices. So some of the most exciting minis for me to look at are fanless ones, like this Neosme AC in, which is completely silent. I've already reviewed the N100 model, which while not perfect, was a nice fanless mini PC. Now we're taking a look at the one featuring the Intel N200. Basically, the Pentium CPU of Intel's Alder Lake N lineup. It's still quad-core, but has a slight increase in turbo frequency and more EUs on the integrated graphics side. But before we continue, the EaseUs Data Recovery Wizard app is very simple to use and can help you recover your lost data, whether it's on your internal drive, USB storage, or SD card. It also has support for repairing damaged photos and videos. Check out the free trial in the video description to find out what it can recover on your storage drives. The lowest price configuration of the Neosme AC8N Intel N200 comes with 16GB of DDR4 and a 512GB NVMe SSD for $300 US. At the time of this video, I'm not sure how that compares as there aren't a lot of N200 minis around, but compared to what I've seen locally, it's competitively priced. In the box is a monitor mount and screws, power supply, HDMI and manual. The N200 model has the same ports as the N100, so that's 4 USB 3 5 gigabit, a micro SD card reader and a separate microphone and headphone jack. The back has a DisplayPort 1.2 as well as HDMI 2.0 and VGA. So there's something for everyone, especially if you're still stuck in the 1990s. But seriously, I'm surprised VGA is still around in 2023. Finally, we have dual gigabit LAN ports. Wi-Fi 6 with Bluetooth 5.2 is included. Opening it up to get to the memory and storage is easy. Two screws and lift the lid. Oh, well that's cool. There's a heatsink on the NVMe drive. The DDR4 RAM is only 2666 megahertz. While that didn't make much difference with the N100, it likely will with the N200 and its extra EUs. Getting access to the CMOS battery and Wi-Fi is more annoying. You'll need to remove the rubber feet and then the screws. You've probably also noticed that there's no additional storage expansion of any kind. Windows 11 Pro is included, but if you want to use Linux, you want to boot it off the USB without issue. Alright, just like the N100 model, this mini PC is set to a power limit of 20 watts and both the N100 and N200 can do more. And just like before, a bias tweak gets more performance, but there's a but. And while I like big butts and I cannot lie, you other brothers can't deny, this butt isn't a great one. Do keep in mind that at this price point, the fanless minis never perform as well as their actively cooled brothers and sisters. In single core, the Neos May N200 beats the N100 at the default power limit. But upping to 30 watts, the N100 was just over 1% better, which isn't a significant difference. And in multicore, we see a similar result. The N200 is ahead at 20 watts, but it's slightly behind at 30 watts, by less than 1%. So pretty close to identical CPU performance. But I was hoping the N200 would boost a little higher and come out on top. Similar result in video encoding. Faster at 20 watts, but at 30, it's behind again by almost 5% this time. With more EUs on the integrated graphics, the DX11 performance was up 10% over the N100 which was less than I expected, so I tried faster memory and there was an almost 5% gain on top of that. It is possible DDR5 would push performance even further. We won't know until it's tested. I was expecting the N200 to match or surpass last year's Pentium N6005 in graphics, but it's just not happening here. In DX12, the N200 by default is 14% faster than the N100 and the 3200 memory adds an extra 3%. So some double digit gains in graphics, but CPU performance is around the same in both Neosme fanless minis. The Intel N200 is an entry level CPU, but it will handle the same things as the N100. 
It has native AV1 video decoding and plays 4K 60fps videos, no problem. It's also okay for simple photo stuff and 1080p video editing is possible and you can play some esports titles or simple games. But you can see with an esports title like Valorant, the CPU is the bottleneck on the N200. Also, you can emulate up to the GameCube, Wii, PS2 era at 720p. You might be able to push some titles to 1080p, but I'll do further game and emulation tests when I have an actively cool DDR5 N200 to compare the difference. The included NVMe storage drive runs at PCIe Gen 3 X1 speed, which is common on these low-end CPUs that have limited PCIe lanes. So the included drive is almost double the sequential speeds of SATA, and the heatsink does its job keeping the NVMe temp in check. Idle power draw is the same as the N100. Max power draw is a little less. CPU temperature was a bit higher with the N200 model, especially in 30 watt mode possibly due to a difference in the cooler and mounting pressure. Speaking of 30 watt mode, I'll quickly go over how to change it. To access the BIOS, mash the delete key on startup. Head to advanced, power and performance, CPU power management control, view configure turbo options, and set power limit one and two to 30,000, which is 30 watts. You can set it higher, but it doesn't make a difference. With this setting, we push the CPU as far as the mini can handle. Okay. So let's go through the pros and cons. Obviously, being fanless is its biggest unique selling point. If you value peace and quiet, this is it. The M.2 NVMe cooling does the job in keeping the drive at a good temperature range. At default settings, this Mini outperforms the N100 model, no problem. But if you're expecting much more performance at the increased wattage, you'll be disappointed. It doesn't have DDR5 or even DDR4-3200 memory, which does reduce graphics performance. I think at least DDR4 3200 should be included with the N200 model. There are no additional storage options on this Mini, so you have to rely on the single storage drive. With the increased wattage, we're looking at a Mini PC that has similar CPU performance to the N100 and around double digit graphics gains, which doesn't make it that exciting. How much more the Intel N200 can actually do? I'm not sure, that's something I'll have to test with an actively cooled unit as the fanless ones on the budget end never perform as well as those. The Neos May AC8N Intel N200 Mini is alright, but I expected more from it, especially when you compare it side by side with the N100 model at the maximum wattage. If you are keen on a fanless mini PC, do check out my review of the Neos May N100 before making your decision. That's all for this one, cheers.